like a lot of people in Colorado, I live in an area that I don't actually have service in my neighborhood. We have challenges that the state of Iowa doesn't have. We have these little things called topography and rock and metal in our grounds here. As a fire chief, I have to carry two cell phones. I have to carry an AT&T phone and I have to carry a Verizon phone. And the coverage is different throughout the entire district. Uh, I'm covering about 14,000 people in uh, a lot of wilderness and a lot of canyons and a lot of backcountry. Traditionally, we have a hard time in the backcountry with communications, especially we're trying to get data to pass on information, whether it's doing evacuations during a wildfire or search and rescue. How many of you have used satellite at some point in time? Hands go up. Some form of terrestrial wireless or LTE, a few hands go up. How many have been in a situation where they haven't had anything? All of the hands go up. What we're doing uh, with Digero is to being able to pull all these technologies into one smart blended aggregate pipe. This represents the pipe of information that I want to send to people. This represents my T-Mobile amount of data, right? And so here's the pipe I want, and here's the pipe I currently have. So how am I gonna to get to this? Our equipment can have up to six SIMs, and the beauty of that is that we can blend these. And what we do, we take all of these straws and we put them into a seamless blend. I got a black one in here because that's my first net SIM, right? I put those into this pipe, and I can now blend all of these, and your equipment thinks that this is one pipe. This van here, you can see we have uh, a satellite dish on top, um, a, a second dish for Starlink, and then a modem that handles signal. And we're having a hard time maintaining connectivity and signal to be able to relay that data out to people. Um, we were doing some testing and we found out about Digero, and they were able to bring a device to us that allows us to blend all of those four sources so that we can maintain uh, our data communications um, throughout an operation. This is what it looks like. It's a big difference from the old pop and point. You don't have to go over to an antenna controller and hit acquire or train your guys how to stow and deploy or switch satellites. Very, very simple to use. You are plugging it in and acquiring. We are now on the Leo Constellation, so this is about 750 miles up, roughly. You're talking about comparable latency connections to terrestrial wireless. With a Kaimeta terminal, you're talking about, on Leo, about 100 megs down and 20 megs up. You're going to hear the term super gig with us. And super gig are the plans that we developed specifically made for public safety. They don't like paying a monthly price tag for something they may or may not have be deployed in the field. So what we're doing with all of these multiple LTE carriers and satellite is you're getting a large bucket of data that you use it when you need it. The tests that we're doing are ranging between three to 400 megs per second, as opposed to the old model, right? Where I've just got a satellite subscription service, I pay monthly and I'm getting only 20 down by five up. Imagine this as being space-based cellular, right? There aren't hurricanes in space, there aren't earthquakes in space. Imagine this as just communicating with a cell tower in space. I think the value of the mesh network is uh, incredible for uh, my particular district because there's canyons and you know two-lane roads that go up through valleys that all have different uh, cell coverage. Um, so having the mesh network be able to pull all those things together is really critical. We're talking about upgrades in the technology we have on our uh, vehicle right now and they will still be able to blend all of those pieces together. Being able to guarantee that we've got a way to connect to people and know that we can talk to them and provide for their needs uh, relieves a lot of stress. Thank you.